Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you, JIS Committee. It's my pleasure to present uh, this case. Uh, our patient is female, uh, 65 years old, uh, hypertensive, diabetic, but she doesn't take any medication. Uh, she presented with severe typical chest pain for our duration associated with dyspnea. It is actually uh, with uh, beginning of the signs of uh, cardiogenic shock. Blood pressure despite is borderline, heart rate 140 and the respiratory rate tachypneic 22. ECG done showed anterior ST segment elevation, we call it infarction. Patient within a few minutes uh, developed frank pulmonary edema and deteriorated rapidly to shock state. Uh, vasopressor started and eventually uh, intubation and mechanical ventilation uh, for this patient and then taken to the cast lab for primary BCI. Uh, RCA is no significant uh, lesion as this is the left system showed the tight osteal uh, LED and tight mid-segment LED but with some haziness of moderate burden of thrombus actually grade 2 thrombus burden. Uh, but there is partial recanalization. It is not total occlusion. This is what we call a transient ST segment elevation of cardiac function. But the question it is with incomplete resolution of the ST segment. Due to thrombus instability and intrinsic activation of fibrinolytic system, some cases are uh, spontaneously revascularized with distal embolization, either macro or micro embolization in such cases. And does the complete resolution or incomplete resolution of ST segment elevation with a spontaneous resolution matters? Of course, the answer from this, this study is matter incomplete resolution associated with all cause mortality in addition to new onset of uh, uh, heart failure in such cases. And also the uh, infarction size by MRI study, it is much less with a transient uh, STEMI with uh, complete resolution of segment in comparison to vulnerable myocardial with persistent elevation of ST segment uh, despite the spontaneous recanalization. So the question for me at the time, uh, shall I go for aspiration thrombectomy? In this case, uh, the answer, of course, all of us know from the guidelines, it is a class three recommendation. And also from OCT studies comparing the uh, rheumatic therapy and jujet with the manual aspiration showed there is significant more than 60% residual large thrombus with manual aspiration uh, in comparison to also 37% residual thrombus after angiojet. And the study concludes that post techniques does not allow for complete uh, removal of the thrombus in such cases. So I decided not to use manual aspiration in this case. It is tight lesion underlying, so I decided to use small balloon but with low atmospheric pressure 60 atmospheric pressure only and this after ballooning it is a patient stable improving of the lesion severity and I decide to go for stenting so I decide due to mild lesion distal lift mean to cross over uh, 3 5 26 at uh, 16 atmospheric pressure and this immediately after deployment of the stent patient become electrically unstable develop interfabulation Within a few seconds, develop VTAC with severe hypotension. This is shock given for this patient. And again, after a few minutes, patient come back to VTAC again, but degenerated to bradycardia. So we give him uh, atropine, amiodarone started. And I repeat his angiography, it is a neuroflow phenomena, distal TIMI zero flow and mid-segment TIMI one flow. So immediately I use the perfusion catheter in our cast lab, Amicas, my preference catheter for injection of medication mid and distal segment of the uh, uh, culprit artery and inject nitroglycerin, adenosine, sodium nitroglycide, and turofaban and improvement of the flow to TIMI, uh, two flow actually, and the vessel growing up after that. But despite improvement of the flow, the patient is still in severe shock. Pressure is markedly uh, 55 with maximum doses of vasopressor. So I decide at that moment we don't have impella in our cast lab. So decide to inject, uh, insert the uh, intraotic balloon. Uh, and of, of course, the pressure is built up significantly to 150. And even I started to win the vasopressor after uh, the intraortic balloon in, uh, uh, insertion. And this actually, despite the debates from uh, shock trial and alone and negative results, I find this important uh, data actually about rapid, complete reversal of systemic hypoperfusion after alone in patient shock with STEMI. The outcome is significantly good 30 days and one year mortality uh, after rapid reversal of the severe hypotension and hypoperfusion. 
So after stabilization of the patient, I decide to insert second stent to the mid LED, uh, 25 by 28 uh, at uh, 16 atmospheric pressure. But again, after stent deployment, patient electrically unstable with frequent BVCs, sh short run of VTACs, and sustained VTAC again, and this should given for him, for her. Then again, I repeat this injection of intracranial medication uh, through the perfusion catheters. And this after uh, still the patient having some BVCs and short run VTAX, I start a midrone infusion for 24 hours. Then finally, I make third wire uh, recross to the left mean, then making final pots uh, 3 5 by 9 at 18 atmospheric pressure. And this is the final results TIMI 3 flow, patient stable uh, in intraotip alone, transferred to uh, ICU, echo done, second day showing severe LV systolic dysfunction, anterior wall akinetic completely, uh, weaning of the trough pan and the midrone after 24 hours, then patient stable and went home after uh, uh, five days. So myocardial tissue neuroflow phenomena open epicardial artery and the closed microvasculature in the myocardium. It is actually multifactorial, but the most important in the acute setting is distal embolization, either macro or micro embolization, causing myocardial malperfusion and the sequelae of myocardial malperfusion, of course, uh, causing patchy microinfarction and arrhythmia, uh, cardiogenic shock uh, with uh, uh, instability of this patient. And the question for transient STEMI, shall we go for immediate or delayed BCI? The answer coming from this study, of course, there is no uh, effect for timing of revascularization and the transient STEMI uh, in terms of infarction size or occurrence of mass rate. And this is a very important paper by Dr. Egrid, uh, of course, about the transient uh, ST elevation. He write a very important statement. I am impressed by this statement. Deferral of angiography and revascularization within 24 hours, 48 hours, in this patient with a transient STEMI Perhaps better outcomes than immediate angiography, especially with hybrid thrombus. So my final take home message, transient STEMI and complete resolution is the segment elevation myocardium function is a marker of vulnerable myocardium. Stent induced distal embolization during primary BCI can cause fatal consequences, including shock state, arrhythmia, and even death. Uh, angiographic neuroflow phenomena, it is a clinical sign of extensive microvascular injury due to distal embolization, especially in anterior STEMI with high burden of thrombus. Neuroflow phenomena, it is a rapidly uh, timely manner, simultaneously management, including uh, uh, the uh, pharmacological intracronary, intravenous, mechanical support, and uh, this is shock for arrhythmia. And we should remember that prevention better than uh, treatment. And again, raising the question, uh, is it different stent strategy is much better than uh, uh, rapid intervention, especially it is transient STEMI with recanalization partially of this artery. Thank you. Excellent.